Kim Hamill, and she was Volunteer of the Year <laughs> for 2012-2013. And I could not, I would not be alive here today oh, and doing this without Kim. So it's so she's funny. funny. Fabulous. You say, you always say Now that. you have lipstick, see? See, yes, I know. I didn't ever put makeup on or anything. Well, now you do have makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as Susan said, my name is Kim. I found Exoma Farms from an article that was in the Press Democrat a couple years ago, around December 8th, and I called Susan, and I, my son is 18 now, and I was actually looking for something else to do with my time because he's, you know, getting ready to graduate from high school, and I thought, you know, I really need to do something with myself. And so I came to Exoma, I called Susan, and she returned my call and she said, well, I'm having a, a clinic for volunteers. Why don't you come on out? So I came out that Saturday. It was in December. It was pouring rain. And I've been here ever since. I, I come out here as, as much as I can. I spend as much time as I can here. It's been fabulous for me. It, it's something that I, I'm invested in. It's been very healing. It's virtually impossible to be depressed or be anxious or sad or angry when you're here. And I absolutely just love it. I love the horses. I love what we do. I like spending time with the people that come out here with us. And that's my story. I love them all. <laughs> Susan's always giving me a hard time because I don't have a favorite, that whatever horse I'm with is my favorite. And so I tend to spend as much time as I, I actually do have a couple of favorites. Probably Mango, because he was the bad boy when I first came here. And then there was Seiji, who was the grumpy old man when I came here. No one did much with Mango because he was a little on the more difficult side. But then I really got to know him and love him, and now he's my baby. And Seiji always looks grumpier than he is because he puts his ears back when you first come to talk to him. But then when you scratch him behind his ears, he puts his little lip out and he just loves you. And so probably Mango and Seiji. And then of course there's Bluff, which is everybody's favorite. And then Cody, who's the mascot, who I have to touch every single time I'm here, both when I come and when I leave, because he's our lucky charm. And um, it's just, it's like rubbing a pregnant woman's tummy. That's Cody. You, know, you just gotta have your little Cody fix. So he's everyone's favorite. But I don't like to say that I have favorites because I feel guilty, like I'm somehow slighting one of the other horses. So by saying that I have a favorite, I, I now have to go around and kiss all, them all and apologize because I don't want to hurt their feelings. <laughs> I remember when I was four years old, my parents, we had to go back to Oklahoma because my great, great, whatever grandfather was um, dying. And so my, grand, my dad took us back to Oklahoma and my uncle Howard had a horse. And I got on the horse and I fell in love with horseback riding and I had to have a horse. I made my mother and my father crazy. I would sleep with, with my horse tack and everything. Eventually they found some guy who had this old horse, his name was Booger. And we rode Booger, and then eventually I conned my mom into um, getting me lessons to ride a horse. So then that lady found this really cool horse for me for 250 bucks. By this time I'm nine. And so I rode her, and then it just, you know, we got into race horses, I got into show horses, I've done barrel racing, um, horse jumping, all of that stuff as a kid. Then my parents got divorced, everything sort of fell apart. I ended up with one horse at the time who died when I was probably 32, about 20 years ago. So 20 years ago it was the last horse that I owned. And I got married, I had a child, I got away from it, and then I needed some, an outlet. I needed some, something more in my life, something better, something that, that gave something back to me, made me feel good about what I was doing. And I always wanted to get back into horses, but when you've got an 18-year-old athlete, you know, money is just so hard to come by. And so when I saw the thing about Susan and needing volunteers, and I called and I came, and it just was such a great fit for me. I just came every day, every minute I could come, and, 
and I just learned more every time I came. I got better at what I was doing. I got to know the horses. I got to know Susan. Um, and every time I came, there was something more that I could do, that I could give. And, and it just became, it's an addiction, really. Um, I think that this place is almost like a postmenopausal woman hangout because a lot of us are women that had horses when we were kids, when we were teenagers, um, young adults, and then our lives interrupted our passion. And so now our kids are growing or grown, you know, whatever reason we have in this time, this loss, this hole. Um, that horses filled for us in some way in our past life that now we're wanting to fill up again. And we have the teenagers who come out and they're wanting to do something that means more to them than video games or hanging out, you know. So they come here and they ride or they, they spend time with other people, who, who teenagers that have the same interest and, and they, they bond. Sometimes they won't even, they won't ride. They'll just kick it and talk and just be with people who have the same interest, who want the same things. And, and so that's another type of, of person that we seem to attract out here. And, but basically it's just about people who want to be here, who want to spend time with the horses. That this place has been a refuge, it's been a place of peace and a place of honor and pride for me. And the time that I spend here, I'm very proud of. I'm very proud of what I do here.